Thank you for joining us for the Immigration.ca live stream series. It's now been one year since we started our first live stream, and we just wanted to thank you very much for all of your support and for following us. And we look forward to another year ahead with you when we have a lot of very interesting topics planned. Um, so if this is your first time joining us, my name is Andrea, and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca, and Colin is also managing partner of SkilledWorker.com. So Colin, today we're going to be discussing studying Canada and how that can lead to permanent residence. It's a very interesting topic and we get lots of questions on this. So we've noticed some trends and what are those trends with regards to international students? Well, first of all, uh, over the last uh, five years, uh, Canada's policies have uh, been directed at increasing the international student population. Uh, it's surprising that it's taken this long for uh, policymakers to actually move forward and uh, attract an, a, an important component to our immigration programs. Uh, studies have long shown that uh, individuals with strong ties to Canada uh, succeed and, and perform the best, uh, able to uh, get jobs and um, really their, their chance of success is, is highest. Uh, people who have a history here, who's, who've learned language, English uh, and or French. So it's really remarkable that it's taken this long uh, for the policies to actually be put into gear and we are seeing numbers uh, year by year. In 2015, the numbers shown that there's over 350,000 international students studying in Canada. Uh, people uh, remark that this is uh, a high number, uh, but actually the numbers will be higher as we go forward. Um, and so international school uh, students are uh, the focus of the colleges in Canada, uh, and the uh, universities and, and high school as well. There's a lot of push uh, for schools in Canada to go after an international student because they represent, first of all, much higher fees uh, to become uh, an international student in Canada. Very costly. You have to be able to afford uh, the tuition, which is higher for foreign students. Uh, so we generally see uh, individuals who want to qualify for an international position uh, at one of the colleges, uh, even high school, uh, university, you're paying more than double what a Canadian would pay. Uh, so one of the screening factors, to uh, put short uh, and sweet, uh, one of the screening factors that you need to look at, can you afford to be an international student? And generally, the cutoff is, uh, we, we, we put a number out there for most of our clients uh, inquiring, you, you need to have basically at least twenty five thousand uh, dollars to be able per year to be able to become uh, a post secondary student in Canada right. uh, so the numbers are showing uh, three hundred and fifty thousand in two thousand and fifteen sixteen uh, we're we're close to perhaps uh, touching four hundred thousand and the future looks to be well more than five hundred thousand by twenty twenty so going back to the students, so what are their options for permanent residence after they've studied? Well, uh, you know, each of the provinces have their own uh, provincial nomination programs. And at the federal level for permanent residence, the federal government has since November 2016, as we know, uh, they've put in uh, additional points. And they now allocate uh, 15 points or 30 points depending on the duration of your post-secondary study. Um, if you uh, are a, a bachelor degree uh, or a master degree holder, you're going to get upwards of 15 or 30 points uh, towards your overall score in the express entry system. So in terms of getting Canadian permanent residence, there's no federal program that will actually put you into a permanent resident stream, what they do is they, they allocate uh, a significant number of points and that's showing up in the overall CRS scores. We're at, uh, we're at a level now where these types of uh, candidates who are in the system uh, are affecting the overall scores and they're currently in the 430 range. Uh, so that's permanent residence at the federal level. Okay, so what about at the provincial level? So at the provincial level, we have a number of nomination programs um, that incorporate 
uh, international graduates. So you have the Atlantic in Immigration Pilot Project, which covers uh, four of the Atlantic provinces. Um, the numbers that are available for students per se, it's probably not that many because it's four provinces uh, and it's an, a total number of 2,000 uh, spots available per year covering the four provinces. Uh, in their particular nomination program. So the Atlantic Immigration Pilot is one option if you're going to study in, the, in one of the Atlantic provinces. Again, each of the provincial programs have uh, their own uh, permanent residence options um, and they all have varying requirements. So whether it's British Columbia or Manitoba, um, uh, Saskatchewan, all of them offer a program that has a number of requirements. Okay. Uh, without going into the details of all the requirements, the topic of today that we're covering is Canada offers international graduates attractive pathways to permanent immigration. This particular item is on our website and in that article uh, we cover all of the provinces and there's a table and charts that uh, delineate all of the requirements. Um, so what you're looking at, most of these programs require a job offer. Um, so for example, <clears throat> uh, a job offer and some post um, a graduate work permit. So you're going to need to get onto a work permit uh, and have a job offer uh, obviously to get that work permit and it has to be permanent. So a lot of these provinces require permanence a full-time job offer. Um, but it's interesting that perhaps two provinces uh, have tempered down the uh, requirement for a job offer. Uh, Ontario, you don't need a job offer if you're graduating from, <clears throat> excuse me, a master's program or a PhD program. But by far the best program is Quebec. It's Quebec because uh, of a number of reasons. The first reason is that there are uh, there's no requirement for a job offer uh, and, and it's the, the level, the entry level for the types of international students. You can be graduating from a college program, you can be graduating from a number of approved diploma programs. Uh, again, they, there's a list and there's a, a, a mix of programs that qualify. Again, the, the catch with Quebec obviously is you need to be studying in French. Uh, or you need to be uh, in an English program and enrolled in a separate stream of French courses which if you pass those courses uh, then you're exempt from having to take a language test. So there's a number of ways to get to Canadian permanent residence by studying in Quebec and without a, an employer coming up with a, a, a permanent offer of employment Quebec is, a, is an interesting option because many international students who don't speak French can take a full-time course of study and parallel to that they can enroll during their course of their studies, enroll in French courses approved by the Quebec government and by passing those courses in a very uh, reasonable time frame you would be exempt from having to take a French language test, which ultimately you need to be at what's called uh, advanced intermediate if you were to pass a French test. Right. If you had to take a French test, you, it's actually harder because you need to pass advanced intermediate. Right. But if you take these French courses, you may not really be at advanced intermediate and you could safely take these courses, pass each one of them, there's not that many, and you could then qualify for Canadian permanent residence without much difficulty. Right. It's, it's quite, as we say, seamless. Yes. And there's many of our clients that are enrolled in these programs, uh, going to school in Quebec at a number of degrees, and uh, parallel to their course of study, they're taking uh, French courses that are approved and are able to transition to Canadian permanent residence. What's interesting is that the Quebec government has a much larger quota than any of the other provinces. Okay. So each year Quebec takes in, in the skilled worker front, approximately uh, 30,000 individuals. Um, and that would include the international graduates. So by far Quebec has the biggest allocation. 
And if you are strategically uh, working towards getting Canadian residents, if you're going to look at your options across Canada, you, you, you certainly want to look at Quebec okay. uh, for, for okay. that particular reason, because the quotas uh, and the allocations are so large, and because you have an option uh, to take your course of study that you want and parallel that with approved French courses, and then you would be given priority in being uh, assessed for Canadian permanent residence. Yeah. That's great. So that covers the provincial programs. I, I don't, do we have any, should we move on to some questions? Sure, that sure. That would be, uh, again, uh, that's the generality of things. Uh, our article that we just, uh, of course, the information that we're talking about is on our website. In the it's news section. In the news section of immigration.ca. Take a look at the, one of the latest pieces, and, and it's, it's really an important component, uh, obviously, with the numbers of students in Canada each year. And the fact that all of the provinces now have some component uh, of an international graduate program right. uh, with uh, no requirement for a job offer. So if you're going to be looking at coming to Canada and saying, you know, I'd like to anchor there permanently, uh, I, you know, for a number of reasons, people look at this option. Yes. Perhaps some individuals, even in their uh, mid-30s or, or 40s, uh, looking at Canada, looking for permanent residence, they can already know that they don't have the scores needed in the express entry system. Uh, and by getting into a Canadian uh, education, you could be increasing your points for express entry, or you could be on a particular pathway for Canadian residents outside of the express entry system. So it has very important strategy, uh, and, and so that's the, uh, that's the takeaway. Perfect. That's great. So one question that we get a lot. So basically, this person's an international student in Canada, and they want to apply for permanent residence. So, Well, look, uh, again, the, the, the choices are, are quite varied, uh, and they're vast. Uh, some of the programs n require you to have a post-graduation work permit. So you need to go through a program. You need to have an employer sponsoring you get onto a work permit program. Uh, again, look at this article uh, and you will understand that either you're going to look at the express entry system as a standalone uh, by going to school. Again, the province you choose is very important because it will either require you to get a work permit or if you're doing a master's degree, you know, Ontario could be a great option. Or if you're looking at a more certainty, a more certainty then you, you kind of want to be looking at Quebec if you can uh, find the course of study that you want. Okay. So this ties in nicely with the next question. How long is a postgraduate work permit valid for? Uh, so, again, the postgraduate work permit will depend on how long your course of study was. Uh, it can vary from eight months to 24 months. So if you are in a short-term program, then your postgraduate work permit can only be for that short period, which is generally going to be eight months. Okay. Uh, so it'll depend on the length of study, uh, and it can be for up to three years, depending, again, on, on, on your length of study. Okay. So this is a very interesting question. How do I find out about schools for international students in Canada? So it's important to, first of all, uh, understand that there's a designated learning institution list that uh, applicants to Canada should be aware of. Uh, we have that list on our site under our study portal uh, on immigration.ca. So take a look. Uh, uh, we have a lot of information on how to find and choose the right school uh, on the study portal of immigration.ca. Again, you need to be uh, going to a designated learning institution and then, of course, uh, you want, as I mentioned earlier, you want to have a good understanding of what are your options for long-term uh, permanence uh, in Canada. And again, the province you go into is going to, is going to be a major uh, factor uh, because, of course, there's such variations. Okay. So you mentioned how Quebec is an attractive option. So how does one go about studying in Quebec? So, uh, you know, the process to Quebec is, is really a two-stage one. Uh, in the sense that Quebec issues what's called a Certificat d'Acceptation. You need a CAQ. So obviously first you need to apply and get into an approved institution. And then you're applying for a Certificat d'Acceptation. Uh, and then uh, ultimately you're then submitting an application to the visa office 
uh, for uh, a study permit. Now, uh, anyone who wants to study in Canada, you need to have really a strong financial profile. And that's really the, uh, the caveat, and it's the obstacle for a vast majority of candidates who want to come to Canada. It's unfortunately uh, a very high threshold uh, in the sense that you need to cover the tuition uh, and living costs for the first year. So you're looking at well more than 20,000 and, and really it's, we try to tell our, our clients in the range of twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars per year, depending on the perfect, you know, depending on the degree you're going into. So Quebec as well, you need um, one year of tuition, one year of living expenses, uh, and and that's generally going to be around twenty-five thousand. You need to apply for a certificat d'acceptation once you're in the school. Um, again, the schools uh, we cover uh, on our website under the study portal. Okay. And this brings us to our final question. So, I am an international student in Canada. Can I work while I'm studying? So the answer is yes. Um, you're allowed to work for up to 20 hours per week, uh, either on campus or off campus, without getting a particular work permit. So when you're going to get a study permit to Canada, you would be eligible uh, to work while you're studying for up to 20 hours a week. This is very useful and it's an important retention, it's, it's an important competitive factor to, to qualify uh, in terms for, for many people who want to be able to know that they can work while going to, to, to school. Uh, it's an, also an important element for uh, Canada as a whole in attracting foreign students, uh, allowing them to cover some of the tuition that they have to uh, incur and so they will be able to work without going and getting um, a labor market impact assessment and getting a study permit, uh, I'm so sorry, a work permit. So it, it makes it a bit easier uh, and it's again up to 20 hours a week. Um, and so again, but if, if, if uh, you want to stay on afterwards, you'll need a postgraduate work permit uh, to uh, stay on after your degree. Right. Great. Well, thank you. So that brings us to the end of our question. So if you're interested in coming to Canada, as always, please do go to our website, immigration.ca. Uh, we have an online assessment uh, that you can complete. And if you're interested in studying, there's a comment section. So please just put in the comments that you would like to study in Canada. Uh, otherwise, if we can always do a consultation with you. So if you go to our website, you can always have a, there's a link for a phone consultation. So you can do that. Or you can always just send us an email. It's csinger at immigration.ca, but this is in the Contact Us section. So as always, uh, if you enjoyed today's content, please do like the video. Please follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, our, our social media. And we just wanted to thank you again for your support and for joining us today. I think our next, uh, again, we're hoping for another uh, live stream, uh, either in two weeks or in three weeks. So it'll be either this, uh, the 14th uh, or the 21st of September. We'll let everybody know. Um, thanks for joining us and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thanks.